blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. I know, verse 13. In verse 13, I know thy works where thou dwellest, even where Satan's siege is, and thou holdest past my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful witness and matter, who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. He knows. Tonight he knows. I said tonight he knows. Verse 19. In verse 19, I know thy works and charity and faith and service and thy patience and thy works and the last of them more than the first, he knows it all. Look at chapter 3, Revelation chapter 3, verse 1. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things says he that has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, I know thy works till the end. He knows, he knows everything. Verse 8. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. And no man shall shut it. For thou hast a little strength. I know the level of strength you have. And hast kept my word and hast not denied my name. I know. Verse 15. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou art cold or hot. Very clear that Jesus knows everything about us. Your concerns, your desires, and your wanting, what you want tonight, what you desire tonight, the Lord knows everything. He will satisfy every longing soul in Jesus' name. Amen. Point number three now. The desirable, the divine touch for a transforming renewal. We're coming back to Mark chapter 5. And I'm reading from verse 34. Mark chapter 5, verse 34. And he said unto her, daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Thy faith has made thee whole. Did he say amen to that one? Amen. Your faith tonight will make you whole. Amen. Go in peace and be whole of thy play. How did she show faith? How did she demonstrate faith? She heard what was she had others to have heard. But others did not take any action. They just said, Jesus is wonderful, but no action. Jesus is great, but no action. Jesus is a miracle worker, no action. Jesus is savior, but no action. Jesus is redeemer, but no action. Look at James chapter 2. James chapter 2, verse 17. Even so, faith... If it had not works, it's dead. Being alone, it is a stretching force of the hand. Saying, I have heard of Jesus. He has healed other people. He has saved other people. He has redeemed other people. And it is based on faith. And I believe in him this moment. And I demonstrate my faith. She put her faith into action. Even so, faith, if it had not works, is dead, being alone. Verse 20. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Faith without action. Faith without works is dead. Verse 26. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith 
without works, faith without action, faith without touch, faith without works is dead also. Your faith will not be dead faith. Active faith, visible faith. And faith that will bring miracle in your life in Jesus' name. Look at Hebrews chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 2. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them. Why? Not be mixed with faith in them that had it. They didn't personalize the word of God. They didn't say, that's for me. They didn't internalize the word of God and say, the possibilities of faith is exactly for me. It was not mixed with faith in the heart of them that heard. Therefore, it didn't profit them. Are you there? And you hear everything. You are hearing sound. But you are not taking the word by faith. Applying it to yourself. And here you are. You have a serious problem. An incurable problem. A problem you had gone about. And you had tried many things. And yet it didn't work. And here is your chance, and the word is not mixing with faith in the heart. The word will mix with faith in your heart. And that faith visible, that faith active, that faith that is going to do, going to act according to the faith, will do something in your life. Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3, verse 16. Acts chapter 3, verse 16. And his name through faith in his name has made this man strong. Faith in his name will make you strong tonight. Whom you see and know, yea, yes, the faith which is by him. I've given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. In our presence tonight, before you leave, faith will work in your life. Faith will heal you. Faith will deliver you. Not faith in yourself, not faith in your own ability, not confidence in yourself, faith in Christ, faith in his name. That at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and everything that torments will clear away from your life. The faith in Christ saves. And that faith in Christ heals. That faith in Christ gives us the victory. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. For by grace are you saved through faith. Without active faith, nobody can be saved. But a person who believes Christ died for me. That's not enough. Action. What's the action? Confession of your sin. And as you confess your sin and turn away from your sin, then something will happen. Forgiveness will come. Salvation will come. New life will come. And victory over sin will come in your life in Jesus' name. By faith, are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves? It is the gift of God. Look at Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15 I'm reading now from verse 9. Acts 15, verse 9. It says in verse 9, And put no difference between us and them, 
purifying their hearts by faith. Purifying their hearts by faith. Anything we need, everything we need tonight, we're going to touch the Lord by faith. I said we'll touch the Lord by faith. As we touch the Lord, he himself will touch you. He will touch me tonight. Me, me, me. He will touch me tonight. Look at what the touch of the Lord does. We're looking at Genesis chapter 32. Genesis chapter 32. Here is Jacob. He was praying. He had a long-standing problem. The problem had been there for many years. Esau had threatened, he was killing. And after the many years, that threat was still there until he began to pray. And as he prayed, look at what happened. In Genesis chapter 32, verse 25, and when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he, the angel, touched the hollow of his tie and the hollow of jacob's tie was out of joint as the result was him it was that touch that went to work on esau and esau the enemy was changed to be a friend even when he saw Jacob, he ran to him and kissed him and wept. His heart had been tender because of the divine touch. He'll give you a divine touch tonight. First Kings chapter 19. First Kings chapter 19. I'm reading from verse 5. First Kings chapter 19 verse 5. Here is Elijah, tired weary, fainting, discouraged, in despair, wanting to give up, wanting to die. But look at this, a torch revived him. That torch will come to you tonight. Verse 5, And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, an angel touched him, touched him, and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink, and he laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time, and, tell me, touched him, and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too long for thee. The strength for the journey ahead. You receive the strength in Jesus' name. And he arose, and he did eat and drink, and went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights unto Horeb, the mount of God. The man that wanted to die, he didn't die anymore. He was taken up with chariots of fire. He experienced the rapture. You will not die on timely days. Everything the Lord still wants you to accomplish, you will accomplish. As he touches you tonight, revival will come in your soul. Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. We're reading from verse 5, Jeremiah, chapter 1, verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, set thee apart. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Is the Lord talking to anybody here today? The Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, 
thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces. Be not afraid of their faces. For I am with thee to deliver thee, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and did what? Touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down. The word of authority has come in your mouth. As the Lord touches your mouth, you pull down every stronghold. And to destroy, you'll destroy every work of the devil. And to throw down any chain, any yoke, you'll grab it, you'll throw it away. And to build, you will build your family. And to plant, good planting of the Lord will be upon your life. Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7. I'm looking at verse 12. Luke chapter 7, verse 12. And now when he came near to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother. And she was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, it's always like that. He has compassion on you tonight. And said unto her, and says unto you, and says unto us, and says unto your family, weep not. And he came, and he came, and did what? Touched the bear. And did a bear, him stood still. And after touching the coffin, he said, young man, I say unto thee, arise. And he that was dead sat up. Your problems are solved. And began to speak and delivered him to his mother. Tonight, a divine touch is coming upon you. One, a touch of recreation. He will recreate you. I said he will recreate you to a touch of reconciliation. As he touches you tonight, it's a touch of love. It's a touch from heaven. He will reconcile you to the heavenly father. He will touch your soul and touch your spirit. It's a touch of recreation. There's a touch of reconciliation. A touch of re-empowerment. He will re-empower you tonight. I said he will empower you tonight. All weakness will vanish away. Frailty will vanish away. Drooping will vanish away. And sluggishness will vanish away. A touch of re-empowerment. Number four, a touch of refining. Refining. It happened to Isaiah. He said, I'm unclean. And then the life cold touched him. And all that was taken away tonight. A touch of revitalization. Look at Daniel. Weak. No strength. And he couldn't stand up. He was lying down there. He said, I feel as if everything within me is into corruption. And the hand touched him. Revitalization came. It's coming tonight. And look at that boy, the only child of the mother, a widow, being carried out. And Jesus touched the coffin, a touch of resurrection. Resurrection. And then there's going to be a touch of reproduction. The Lord will reproduce something good in your life tonight. Nobody is living here empty-handed. You will touch the Lord, and the Lord will touch you. In your soul, the Lord will touch you. In your spirit, the Lord will touch you. 
in your body, the Lord will touch you. And everything that is weary and weak, and it's like I can't move forward again, new strength and new power is coming tonight. And then Daniel said, now I can rise up. And he said, I rose up on my feet, and I said, I am strengthened. And I'm looking at you rising up upon your feet, and strength has come and power has come and authority has come and he says it's going to touch you tonight you remember that what woman said she said if i may but touch the hem of his garment i shall be made whole." why don't you make up your mind tonight your part all the various areas of touch your lips your mouth your eyes your ears and it can touch your spirit touch your soul touch every part of you and as it touches you tonight there's going to be revitalization there's going to be restoration there's going to be recreation and there is going to be resurrection there is going to be reproduction the lord is touching you tonight to open your mouth and tell the lord touch me lord touch me lord touch me lord touch me lord are you like jacob and as an Esau that is after your life are you like Jacob and there is a fear that has said it's like a spell upon your life? Are you like a Jacob and it is like you're afraid of what might happen when you meet Esau? Let him touch you here tonight and then you can go out with confidence and courage. You can go out in power and you know, you know, because he has touched you, there's going to be reconciliation between you and Esau. Reconciliation between you and your husband. Reconciliation between you and your wife. That's what we're waiting for. A touch of the Lord. A touch of the Lord. A touch of the Lord. And reconciliation will come between Jacob and Esau. Between husband and wife. Between wife and husband. Between parents and children. Between leader and follower. A touch tonight. A touch tonight. A touch tonight. Elijah was weak. Elijah was discouraged. Elijah felt there's nothing in front. Elijah felt the ministry has come to an end. Elijah felt there's nothing to live for again. Let me die. Let me die. Let me die. But then a torch came and revival came. A torch came and renewal came. That torch is coming to you tonight. If you're discouraged, all you need is a torch. It's a torch. If you are down, all you need is a torch. If you are in despair, all you need is a torch. If you are thinking of ending life and ending ministry, all you need is a torch. If you are thinking of running away because a Jezebel is running after you, all you need is a torch tonight. It touches our souls. It touches our spirit. It touches our personality. It touches us at the point of weakness. At the point of being weary. It touches us. And when that touch comes upon you, revival will come. Renewal will come. Are you like Isaiah? Isaiah, unclean lips, unclean words. Unclean thoughts, and you want to be free. And you're telling the Lord, I'm a man of unclean lips, a woman of unclean thoughts, and I dwell in the midst of unclean people. I don't appreciate all these unclean things coming to me, coming my way. I want to be clean, I want to be pure, I want to be refined, I want to be holy. I want to be circumcised in my heart through and through. I want a refinement in my soul, in my spirit, in my body, in my language, in my words. A touch of the coal of fire will refine you tonight, will reform you tonight, and will revive you tonight, and purify you tonight, and sanctify you tonight. Strength will be reproduced in you power will be reproduced in you are you like jeremiah i cannot talk i'm shy i'm fearful the people you sent me to they're like they're not giants i'm like a grasshopper 
I'm afraid to talk to them. I feel little. I feel small. I feel childish. I feel poor. I feel incapable. I feel I cannot do anything. He says he's touching your mouth tonight. And he puts the word in your mouth. A touch, a touch, a touch that will bring reassurance. A touch that will bring righteousness. A touch that will bring power. A touch that will bring courage. A touch that will bring confidence. Let him touch you tonight. Let him touch you tonight. Touch your soul. Touch your spirit. Touch your body. That woman had been sick. Blood flowing out ceaselessly for 12 years. She had become emaciated, weak, unclean, unacceptable. Was not beautiful again to the family. But she said, there is still solution. And the solution is in a touch. She heard of Jesus. Jesus the healer. Jesus the deliverer. Jesus the redeemer. And Jesus the power of God in man. Jesus who is able to change everything in her life. She heard of Jesus. Savior, healer, deliverer, master, king of kings, lord of lords, she heard of Jesus. And then faith came in her. If I may touch, but his garment. If I can only touch his garment tonight, I shall be made whole. You're still healing the sick today? You're still delivering the oppressed today? You're still the miracle worker today? Jesus anointed of the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good, healing all, healing all, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. And still the same. God says, I'm God, I change not. And Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today and forever. He will touch you tonight and then you're made whole. It's a touch of recovery. A touch of recovery. And he wants to give you that recovery tonight. A touch of restoration. He will restore you tonight. Every strength you have lost. Every virtue you have lost. All the courage you have lost. All the confidence you have lost. It's a night of the touch of recovery. A touch of restoration. He will bring you back to fellowship. Your back's leading, come and touch him. Touch his love. Touch his mercy. Touch his goodness. Touch his grace. Receive the grace of God. There'll be a touch of restoration. There'll be a touch of renewal. A touch of renewal. He renew your commitment. He will renew your consecration. You renew your determination. You renew the strength, inner strength in you. Give you regeneration. New birth. New life. Righteousness. A touch of reassurance. Well, that touch, it tells you, you are mine, I am yours. You are mine, I am yours. A touch of righteousness, a touch of refreshing. A touch of refreshing. A touch of refreshing. Things are going to be different in your life after tonight. Touch him and he's touching you now. Touch him and he's touching you now. Something that never happened before will happen. Something incomparable, it will happen. Something irresistible, it will happen. 
something irreplaceable it shall happen you're not going to exchange the experience of tonight you're not going to exchange it for anything else in your life an indispensable miracle an irreversible miracle an incomprehensible miracle an indispensable miracle that's why you are here tonight for a divine touch touch him and he will touch you touch him and he will touch you say lord i believe lord i believe you are no respect of persons lord i believe faith without works is dead faith without action is dead faith without confession is dead faith without the right attitude is dead lord i believe lord i believe do it in my life tonight In Jesus' name we pray. Children of God, conquerors and overcomers, in Jesus' name we pray. You have touched him. He has touched you. Don't worry about how you feel or what you feel. Don't worry about what you say or what you don't say. He has promised he cannot fail. His power cannot fail. His promise cannot fail. His grace cannot fail. And a supernatural action cannot fail. You have touched him tonight and he has touched you. He touched me. He touched me. Where are you? He touched me. Where are you? He touched me. Where are you? He touched me. That touch will be effectual tonight. Father, in Jesus' name. Your Father to Jesus, our Lord. Your Father to every one of us. You love everyone. Your mercy is for everyone. Your power is for everyone. Your grace is for everyone. And the divine touch tonight is for everyone. Lord, I rejoice with all your people. Your people will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Touch their soul. Draw them nearer unto yourself. Break down the wall of partition between any sinner and yourself tonight in Jesus' name. Give every sinner a touch of grace, a touch of love, a touch of mercy, a touch of reconciliation, a touch of salvation. Save them in Jesus' name. Give them assurance, a touch of reassurance that now they belong to you, they are saved in Jesus' name. Every backslider, give them a touch of your love, a touch of receiving them, a touch of reconciliation, a touch of restoration. Let them feel your love in their hearts tonight in Jesus' name. Whisper to their ears by your spirit, I am yours and you are mine. Lord, I pray they will be partakers of abundant grace and forgiveness tonight in Jesus' name. All your children, brothers and sisters, young and old, I pray for them now. I'm asking, Lord, the children who are feeling weak, who are feeling weary, who are feeling tired, or feeling, uh, can I go on? Can I not go on? Touch them tonight in Jesus' name. A touch of power. A touch of the supernatural. A touch of strength. A touch of refining. And a touch of renewal. And a touch of resurrection. 
do it in their lives in Jesus' name. Lord, nobody ever was sick and went back from you. The same still sick, impossible. Tonight, there's healing for everyone. There's deliverance for everyone. Whatever, whatever, whatever the problem, blind eyes, deaf ears, withered hands, kidney that is not functioning, and any part of the body that is not working, appendicitis, impotence, whatever. Touch everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Long-standing sickness. 12 years of sickness, 38 years of sickness, 40 years of paralysis. Lord, touch everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Those who are weak, those who are impotent, those who are paralyzed, those who are lying down helplessly anywhere and everywhere now, give them a touch. Raise them up. And anything that is dead, not functioning in their body, let the power of resurrection come with that touch in Jesus' name. Our children who have forgetful memory, like the brain is dead, and they are not able to perform like we expect as parents. Lord, I pray, revive their brains tonight. Touch their brains tonight. Quicken their brains tonight. And those subjects they are not able to understand, as to quicken them and make their brains alive, they will understand. Their grades will come higher. Their results will come higher. I pray for anyone that is having forgetful memory, who are getting old, and because we're old, I can't remember that, I can't remember that. Oh Lord, touch the old people, elderly people tonight, in Jesus' name. The sickness is anyone has taken to the hospital, to doctors, and it's like, well, just uh, going to uh, read my role, and there, there's been no healing, healing tonight. Deliverance tonight. Power tonight, authority tonight, send forth your word of power and healing. Heal everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Take sorrow away from every life. Infirmity away from every life. Lord, once again, make tonight an unforgettable night of touch. Touch your people. As they touch you, and as they are going out, they go out with their miracles. Indisputable miracle. Incomparable miracle. Irresistible miracle. Incomprehensible miracle. An irreversible miracle. Irreplaceable miracle. Indisputable indispensable do it in every life right now put testimony in every mouth thank you lord because we know you have done it in jesus name i pray praise the lord the lord has answered the prayer for you
wow, 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 wow. I'm so wow. happy to hear the voice of the people of God. Even at this time, I say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are we still online? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. God bless you. May God bless everyone tonight. Uh, may this uh, ninth prayer meeting be a blessing to you, to every one of us, even tonight, in the mighty name of Jesus. Because I'm believing God that tonight, the power of God will work mightily in our lives, in Jesus' name. The power of God will work mightily in our lives, in Jesus' name. And I am believing God that after the prayer meeting tonight, 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 so we have testimony to share for the goodness and for the word upon our life. Praise the Lord. And I believe in God that even as we pray tonight, all the mountain, all the challenges, the good God will remove every mountain, every challenges away from the life, from every one of our life, even tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Please, I want us to emote ourselves Please, can you please emote yourself because this is a midnight prayer meeting. I believe you are in the house, you are at home, except you are on a special duty, except you are on, on, on the highway or you are driving or you are in your place of work. But if not, please emote yourself because this is all uh, uh, prayer uh, conference and prayer meeting. I'm not believing God tonight. Pray together tonight. God, we so walk mightily in your life, in your ministry, in your family, every one of us, in Jesus' name. Amen. Tonight, I have to announce to you, tonight, today is the end of August. By tomorrow, if Jesus study, we enter a new month by September. As I was preparing and brainstorming how we are going to go about this prayer online today, the Lord said we should pray on death needs helper. You see, most of our lives, we need help. And uh, by the special grace of God, as we go into the session of the prayer tonight, you will discover that you need help in life. And your death needs helper will locate you wherever you are, in Jesus' name. Amen. I want us to pray together. Heavenly Father, we appreciate you. We bless you. you. We glorify you. We exalt you. We thank you because from the first day of this month of August, you have helped us, oh God. From the first day of August, you have been our shield. You have been our helper. You have been our guider. You have been our supporter. We appreciate your love. We appreciate your mercy over our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father, we pray. The strength to pray. The power to pray. The anointing to pray. We pray tonight. Release everyone of us, even tonight. Amen. I want you to open your mouth to appreciate the Lord for my soul and all that is within me. Praise his holy name. Open your mouth, exalt his name, magnify the name of the Lord. I want to hear you praying and thanking God. Because tonight is going to be a night of a night of testimony. It's going to be a night of divine help. It's going to be a night of a night of supernatural help. Open your mouth and bless and worship the Lord. 
Thank him for the grace upon your life. Thank him for his protection upon your life. Thank him for his goodness upon your life. Thank him for his liberation upon your life. Thank him for his anointing upon your life. Oh my soul, all that is within me, holy name. Our God is worthy to be praised. Open your mouth and show to God. Show our to King of Kings. Show our protection to the Lord of Lords. Because God is power, power from God is going to beat everyone so tonight. He's going to manifest his power to upon everyone tonight. And you will have a testimony. You will be blessed tonight. The, the power of oh God will locate you tonight. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you are going to share the testimony. Give him the glory. Give him the honor. Our God is good. Our God is like our God is powerful. Worship the Lord and bless his holy name. Thank you, Father, because of your manifold blessings. This is the last day. This is the 31st of the month of August. From Jesus, from August 1st, all the time you do. August 1st, August, August the enemy thought it will swallow you all. The enemy thought the, 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 this month of August, you will not see the end of August. But the grace of the God, by the power of the government, preserve your life, preserve your ministry, preserve your family, and God has brought you to the end of August. By my powers from now, you have a son who will be crossed in the first September. Let us only be washing the mighty mighty adorned. He did the glory because of you. Our God is a mighty God. For his protection, we worship you. For his goodness, we adore you. For his preservation, we are excited. For the benefit we have, we have, we have, we have, we have. For everything we have received, we bless you. For all that is the process in life. For the gift of life, for the dominion we have in Christ, we worship you. For the preservation we have preserved in Christ, we exalt you. For all the goodness of mercy of God upon our life, we worship you. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within him. Bless the holy day. Our God is good and is worthy to be praised. Who is like unto our God? I want to hear the voice of the conqueror. I want to hear the voice. Of the people what he has done in your life. Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Today is the end of September. God be the glory. We are eyewitnesses of this month. As the Lord has brought up at the end of this month, we should once again and say, Father, we thank you. For all the benefit we have received in this month of September, give him the glory. For this month of August, our God has brought you to the end of the month of August. Give him the glory. Worship the Lord. Exalt him. Magnify his holy name. Almighty God, everlasting Father, God, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen. A louder amen. 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 Our Father, we thank you so much for everything we have received in this month of August. In our life, of your deliverance. Of your dominion, of your protection, your salvation, your liberation. Father, we are praying tonight that you will reach out to every one of our one of us as we in this prayer conference in Jesus' name. Amen. As we want to exhort briefly in the word of God now before we before we understanding as we treat this subject of prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Already from the from the um, post and publicity in the platform, you will know that we are talking about destinies. 
And the briefly what I want to share with you before we pray. Destiny killer. These two people in life, you must contact them in your journey in life here on earth. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Ephesians 2, verse 10. Created in Christ Jesus out of good works, which God had before he ordained that we should walk in them. God has a plan and purpose for our lives. And there are eyes we will never reach except he sent us destiny to help us. It does not matter how educated you are. It does not matter what you know. We all need destiny to help us to rise us all. God is too big to make mistakes. God exposed to us from scripture about the ministry of destiny helper. God is not a role ranger. <laughs> Even Jesus he was not a role ranger. He understood that he needed help when he was on earth. After praying and fasting, he called on the 12 disciples. Remember, he spent all night praying before he chose his 12 disciples to assist him in his assignment. God has been able to do what he did. In Genesis chapter 2, verse <laughs> and, the, and the Lord said, It is not good that the man should be alone, and we make him an help meet for him. You, you see that now. Do you remember Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5? All truth was said. Jeremiah was looking at his present situation. I am a child. I cannot speak. But God was speaking to him of his original plan for his life. Some people keep thinking and getting worried because they fail. <laughs> and it's already gone. God can still talk any situation around my brother may, mm -hmm. now, may i break it down for you to understand what is destiny destiny is what god created you to be number two destiny is your divine purpose number three destiny mm -hmm. is your assignment on earth number four praise the lord Praise the Lord. Who are destined to help her? And what can they do? I also tell you, they never connect you to the top. They have value to your life. Does it help her go out of their way to help you? They help your ministry. They help your career, they help your family, they help your business, etc. They move by barrier from you and from your family and from your ministry. They find helper fight on your behalf as if the battle is theirs. They use the network to open opportunity for you. They have to make your way smooth. Once you miss your destined helper on earth, ah, it ah, will ah, take ah, the ah, grace ah, of God to see be successful. You must be careful in your character. Misbehavior to your destined helper can chase them away from you. See now, God is still sending this helper to the war, but because of ignorance, many believers have chased them away. In Genesis chapter 18, Jethro was a 
destined helper to Moses. In Genesis chapter 40, verse 6 to 7, Joseph was a destined helper to the chief buckler, and he helped them to solve their body in fulfillment of their destiny. You remember the story. They had a dream, and Joseph interpreted the dream to that to that man. And Joseph told him, When you get when you get to Pharaoh, make mention of me. It was through Joseph, the buckler got to got back to the palace, and that same buckler God used him to be a destined helper to Joseph. After two years. He was forgotten, and Pharaoh had a dream, and Joseph and the buckler say, I remember my fault. God now used that buckler to be a destined helper to again to Joseph. In <laughs> 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 3, it was a maid that God used to, to help Lehman. Who was who was a king, but because of leprosy and the advice of that uh, uh, of that little girl brought healing and deliverance upon Lema. In Esther chapter four, Esther was offered, but in her uncle Mordecai was a destined helper to Esther, and later on Esther become helper to Mordecai and to the entire Israelites. My dear brother, my dear sister, does it ever block many people's dream? Like, 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 like Joseph, the lad they try to rebuke his dream, but Joseph encouraged himself. They may delay somebody's destiny and they may frustrate and waste their effort. Does it help? Does it kill her? Always see negative thing in your side. They try to kill the dream, the dream and the vision of your life. My dear brothers and sisters, I want to, I, I want to. I want to let you know that by the grace of God and by the power of the Holy Spirit, that the Lord God Almighty will send destined helper to locate you so that by the grace of God, the purpose and plan of God in your life will come to pass in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You remember Aaron was an example of a destined killer who was burned and about demolish the desert of Jesus. He looked for every way to kill Jesus, but he failed. Once again, before I, I release this to pray, don't forget the book of Esther, Lema was a destined killer who wanted to wipe all out the Jew, not because they offended him. He just ate them. He was an enemy of good things. Don't mm -hmm. forget, Elisha need Elijah to get the double portion. My dear mm -hmm. brothers, my dear sisters, by the grace of God, you will locate your desert helper in life in Jesus' name. Yeah. Yeah. Even Jesus himself, when he came to this world, he need people to assist him for the work of the ministry. After he pray, he pray, he pray, he need people, and then he choose 12 disciples to assist him in the ministry. You all need help. We need help in life. We need people to take up a, 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 a connection that we call Connect you to, to your destined helper. And I pray every destined killer, the Lord will deliver you from them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You are going to pray now. You are going to commit yourself to the hands of the Lord. You are going to pray, oh God, remember me and spare me air from above. Oh God, remember me and send air from above. Open your mouth and talk to God in prayer. That God should remember you. The King of Kings should remember you. And God should send you air from above. The power of God will send air to locate you. God will send your air power to locate you wherever your air power is in life. Let God remember you and send air to locate you. Why can't you pray? Ask the Lord to send air power to locate you. 
We are talking about destiny. We are talking about destiny. They are 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 destiny. They
Whatever they have used to cover your destiny, whatever they have used to cover what God has ordained for you, the Bible says, and I will destroy in this mountain the face of the every hand. Whatever they have used to cover your your, your destiny, or you are going to pray. Every satanic garment that covers your destiny and is trying to cover your own destiny, you are going to pray. The fire of God will destroy. All upon the Lord and pray. All upon the Lord and pray. Are you praying? and the veil, the veil they have used to cover your glory, the veil, the veil they have used to cover your star, the veil, the veil they have used to cover your Christianity, the veil, the veil they have used to cover your Christianity, the veil, the veil they have used to cover your Christianity, the veil, the veil they have used to cover your Christianity, the veil, the veil they have used to cover your Christianity, the veil, the veil they have used to cover your Christianity, the veil, the veil they have used to cover your Christianity, the veil, the veil they have used to cover your Christianity, the veil, the veil they have used to cover your Christianity, Jesus name we pray. Jesus name we pray. Amen. Listen to that portion of the Bible again. He said, and I will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast. The face they used to cover the 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 the, the, the cover it covering cars whatever they have used to cover you my brother your daughter is up to marriageable age she has not yet married and it's like they use something to cover her my brother you are due to marry but yet because they have used a garment of cover To assist you, cannot see you, and the Lord is telling you tonight, and I will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast and the vein ah. of other people. You are going to pray. Hey, my brother, yeah, somebody need to pray this prayer you. loud and clear. Somebody need to pray this prayer with holy anger so that the Lord has uh, said yes, yes, to the more of the Thank <laughs> you. 
I need a ladder, amen. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen to this. The Bible says, and Jesus answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly father has not planted shall be uprooted. Oh, shall be uprooted. Oh, you are going to pray. Any power, any spirit, any power, stand there with your helper and your breakthrough. You are going to ask the Lord to uproot them. Oh, ask Jesus. the Lord to uproot them. Any oh, power, stand there before your helper. Every you and your helper. Any spirit, stand there and your helper. That is trying to make a hedge. Not to let us ask you to Ask the Lord to wash those things out. Let us come to cross out of your path. Let the power be crossed out. Let the power be crossed out. Let the power be crossed out. In the name of Jesus, we are going to pray for the Lord. Whatever is in the power of the Lord. By your power, by your power, you know, and your your the Bible says, and I will restore to you the years that the locusts are eating. You are going to pray oh, yes. the original destiny you were born with that they have a jack. That the enemy have stolen, that they have ajacked away from you from your destiny. You will ask the Lord to go after them to restore them back. To restore them back. To restore them back. Whatever you have lost in the past, whatever they have stolen away from you spiritually, materially, financially, spiritually, I said, Lord, restore them back. Oh God, and I will restore them back. Yes, the Lord has eaten and the cancer more and the cancer more. Whatever the enemy has stolen away from your family, whatever the enemy has stolen away from your life, ask the Lord to restore them back. The Lord will restore them back in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Night of restoration. I will restore. 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 I will